This is a big one. Digimon Tamers has been my favorite season since the beginning. There is plenty of reasons why this is my favorite season and we will get into some of them. Though I do want to state that I'm going to try and make this video shorter than the last two because I could talk about Tamers for hours. So Tamers brings us a brand new cast of characters as the Events of Adventure is now a TV series for our new generation to enjoy. Beyond that, the Digimon franchise also supports the Digimon card game and Digimon video games enjoyed by the Digidestin slash Tamers. We begin meeting Kalamon, a childish Digimon that holds the power of evolution, running from a Digimon, and he gets blasted to the human world after a dark Tyranomon shows up and kills the Digimon chasing Kalamon. Something I never thought about until writing this, the first thing we see with this season is Takato and Kazu playing the Digimon card game, where Takato defeats the Digimon that was chasing Kalamon by evolving his Tyranomon into Dark Tyranomon. One, that's some good foreshadowing, if I'm only noticing it now, and two, it raises the question, do the kids uh, that play the Digimon card game affect the digital world the same way the video games do? It doesn't come back, but it's an interesting thought that the kids playing a game for fun are the root cause of some of the problems in the digital world, which would explain why Zhu Chaomon wants to destroy the human world initially. So, as Takato and his friends Kazu and Kanta are heading to school, Takato drops his cards and finds a mysterious blue card that fries his card reader and makes him late for class. Because of this, he has to wait in the hallway where he creates Giyomon. This is where we get to why Takato is my favorite of the Digi Destin. He is such a fan of the series that it inspires him to create his own Digimon at the age of 10. He's 12 in the dub, but 10 originally. Takato is a creative kid who loves what he loves and doesn't care what anyone else thinks about it, which I and many other people can easily relate to. He also isn't the brightest kid and can be known to speak before thinking, like when he mouths off to his teacher in the first episode. Now, at the end of the day, while Takato is still doing his work because he likely got detention, he gets scared by Jerry, one of the sidecasts that will become more important as the series goes on, and the love interest for Takato. I like Jerry, and uh, those reasons come late into the series. What you need to know to start is she's a weird kid that always has a puppet that she talks with, and uh, she's generally nice to everyone around her. Always uh, laughing and smiling. Takai returns to where he left his cards while a storm starts. His card reader transforms into a Digivice and Takato has a fairly normal reaction, not believing that it just appeared. I mean, if my phone all of a sudden became a Digivice, I would think I was losing it too. It's impossible. I'm going nuts. I'm sitting inside of a dinosaur with a Digivice, right? So after returning home to his parents' bakery, he runs up to his room where he tries to find the blue card that transformed his card reader. He tries to rationalize the events of that morning, and he tries to swipe his notebook where he drew Giyomon. It gets stuck, and as he goes to leave, all of his many notes on Giyomon and his abilities get scanned, and Giyomon's egg appears on the screen of the Digivice. That night, another Digimon appears, and in Takato's dream, he watches Rika, or Rugi, Japanese name, fight with Renamon to tank down Lynxmon. During the fight, Renamon senses Takato and Giyomon. Though, for the longest time, I didn't realize that this was more foreshadowing for events yet to come. This time, being that Digimon are capable of finding other Digimon just by using their more feral senses. After the fight, Takata wakes up and asks his dad about Digimon, questioning him on what if they were real. I actually remember being that kid that wondered what if the stuff I loved was real. I remember playing Naruto, running around my school playground with friends, pretending to be whatever character. Same with Digimon and even Pokemon. My point is, I can see a lot of myself in Takato. Tamers likely helped shape my personality more so than any other series I've watched, played, or read. Takato tells his friends that Digimon are real, to which they don't believe him. After they leave, Takato learns Giyomon's egg hatched and he finds a compass on his Digivice. He runs off to find Giyomon and we meet Yamaki, our government agent that hates Digimon and wants to destroy them all so that they can't harm the real world. While Takato is searching for Giyomon, we meet Henry, or Jian Liang, which I guarantee I mispronounced, and his sister Susie, I'm not even going to try it with her original name, alongside Henry's partner, Terriermon. Takato finds uh, Giyomon as he emerges from the digital world, and Giyomon immediately hits a rat with his pyrosphere, while Takato is introducing himself, and as Giyomon turns to face Takato for the first time, Takato realizes that he could be in danger because Giyomon might not be friendly. This is a great first episode because it takes time to introduce you to our main character. We only get to know very surface things about all of our supporting cast and our other two main Tamer characters. While this is the start of the season, Tamers takes its time to introduce you to the kids before they're saving the world, unlike every other season where saving the world comes first. The first arc of Tamers is less about stopping the first enemy and instead 
it wants to show you the kids coming together and just trying to keep the peace of their world alongside their new friends. At least that's true with Takato and Henry. Anyway, it doesn't take long for Gilmon to reveal that he's not hostile to Takato, and uh, Takato sneaks Gilmon back home, hiding him from his parents, and once in his room, we see why Gilmon is my favorite Digimon. Now, the genius behind Gilmon, at least in the dub, is that he acts like a dog. Oftentimes, Takato will call him boy, which can be shorthand for dog. Now, intentional or not, what makes this work is when you make the connection that Takato and Gilmon's relationship can be described as a boy and his dog, it immediately creates a connection between the viewer and Gilmon. The way Gilmon acts can hit whatever portion of your brain that houses nostalgia. Many kids grew up with a childhood pet that they were likely close to. So if you see yourself in Takata's shoes, you could easily see the connections he and Gilmon have, allowing you to care more deeply about their problems. So Gilmon immediately starts messing up Takata's room, throwing everything off his desk and Takato pulls out his goggles. That night, while the two sleep, Takato's parents discuss getting him a pet and why they can't. This isn't too important, but I want to highlight Takato's parents. While they contribute very little to the series, we're constantly being shown his parents interacting with each other. When they do, they're often joking with each other and discussing stuff about Takato. Later in the series, when he's really late getting home, they go out searching for him, worried that he was in trouble. Rika also has a good uh, relationship dynamic with her mother and grandmother that I may get into later, and Henry has a good one with his father, though he rarely interacts with his mother. Anyway, a Goblimon appears uh, and uh, Rika and Renamon show up to defeat it. During the fight, uh, Goblimon digivolves with the help of Kalamon. Afterwards, Renamon, with the help of a modified cards, defeats uh, Fugamon, a variant of Ogamon, and loads his data. This is the first time we see data being loaded, breaking the well-known rule that Digimon never truly die. We also get to see the beginning relationship of Rika and Renamon, who are somewhat cold to each other. They primarily want to have power, so they fight every Digimon they find, so Renamon can have the power to Digivolve and Rika can be the best tamer. The following morning, Takato hides Gilmon in a box, in an alley, telling him to stay in it. And he goes to school, where Gilmon follows him. In the school, Gilmon searches for Takato when he comes across the school's principal. Student? Shouldn't you be in class? I in a box. And just what's with this cardboard box anyway? Take it off! No! Takato Mon said stay in uh, box. When you're at school, you obey the principal. So when I say take off the box, you take off the box! Okay. <laughs> Afterwards, Takato finds out that Gilmon is in the school where before he thought he was seeing things when he saw Gilmon's box. And upon finding out that Gilmon is missing, he goes to find Gilmon and Henry overhears Takato say Gilmon's name. This leads Henry to introduce himself and Terrymon. Their relationship is very much that of close friends that have known each other for years, mixed slightly with that of an older brother, younger brother dynamic. They often joke with each other and Henry often has to keep Terrymon in line since he always speaks either very bluntly or very sarcastically antagonizing others. Terramon pretty much states that Takato screwed up and Takato runs off thinking that he won't be able to find Gilmon. Not long after, Takato finds Gilmon on the roof of the school. Afterwards, the two go to the park searching for a place for Gilmon to live where they get attacked by Rika and Renamon. After a small back and forth between Rika and Takato, the two Digimon start fighting. Takato tries to get Gilmon to stop fighting, though Gilmon doesn't listen because early on he goes feral when he fights. Takato manages to break through to Gilmon before things get too bad, sending Renamon away. After Rika orders Renamon to continue fighting, Henry and Terrymon show up stopping the fight. He questions Rika about why they're fighting and we get the first scene of many where the three tamers show their varying ideas of what Digimon are meant for. Henry takes a neutral stance of they're like people and want to do what the kids want to do. Rika believes that Digimon are nothing more than data and exist only to fight and become stronger, and Takato, much like Henry, believes Digimon can do whatever they want. Takato and Henry introduce themselves to each other properly while their Digimon play together. So over the next few episodes, uh, the three will reach their champion forms and we will learn more about them and the shadow organization Hypnos. Each evolution this season is special. In Adventure, the first evolution comes when the kids are in danger. The second tends to come when they pass a hurdle and act upon their assigned crest. In Tamers, they evolve differently. When they all evolve to their champion forms, it's when the Digimon are in danger and the kids are worried about them. When Terramon is almost blasted by Renamon, he digivolves despite Henry not wanting him to. When Renamon is almost killed by a Dokugamon, she digivolves. When Rika starts uh, learning that she cares about Renamon, 
A feeling that she will deny later, but it's the start. Gilmon only digivolves after Takata realizes Gilmon is his best friend, and when Gilmon is in danger from Davidramon. Unlike the previous seasons where the Digivolutions was just kind of a plot point for the main characters, this time around they Digivolve only when the Digimon kids and bonds grow stronger, justifying the evolutions as more than just a p more powerful form. Now before we get into the Dave arc where the series gets amazing, let's talk more about the kids and their bonds with their Digimon. And let's do that in order of when it happens, so let's start with Henry. The episode It Came From The Other Side is the episode where we learn about why Henry doesn't like a Terriermon fighting. Before he was a tamer, his father got him a brand new Digimon game, and when he gets Terriermon, the Goromon he was using at the time escapes into the network, at least originally. In the dub, Henry chooses Terriermon over Gorillamon, and when the game refuses to shut down, Henry concludes that Digimon have a reality of their own. Regardless of the dub, Henry realizes that the Digimon he fought in the game were real and that his actions hurt both Terriermon and the Digimon he fought. His fears about fighting also spawned from the game uh, when Terriermon originally digivolved and lost control of his own power. It was after that that Henry found his blue card and brought Terriermon to our world. He then promises that Terriermon won't have to fight anymore, which would keep Terriermon safe. Now when it comes to Rika and Renamon, I need to start with Rika and her mother's relationship. They do not have a good one, and from what I understand, before the series began, Rika's parents divorced and her dad isn't around too often, possibly not at all, as we only see him in a memory during Runaway Locomon. So Rika lives with her mother and grandmother. Rika's mother is a model that is fairly successful, which causes her not to be around very often, usually having to run off when she is around. Early on, we see Rika's mother trying to relate to Rika, though she isn't very good at it. Though Rika, jaded, gives her very short answers and generally ignores her. Rika's mother also wants Rika to follow in her footsteps and become a model, to which Rika doesn't. And Rika generally has a better relationship with her grandmother because she more often respects Rika's wishes better than Rika's mother. The base problem between Rika and her mother is that her mother isn't around as much as she probably should be. Though saying she should work less is easier said than done. Maybe her mother has bills and has to work as much as she does. Maybe she doesn't. It isn't that it's important, only really offering a little more context as it doesn't affect things too much. What does affect is how Rika sees her mother. Rika's viewpoint is that her mother is always leaving. Whenever she is supposed to be around, work calls and her mother leaves. This causes their relationship to become more distant in a problematic way. Keep in mind that most kids form their view of relationships from their childhood friends and their parents. So what do we know about Rika's relationships? Her parents split up, then her father was never around, and her mother was constantly working, awesome never around. Rika's grandmother probably helped raise Rika from then on, and because we never see any of Rika's other friends, it can be assumed either those friendships didn't last, or she just never really had any. So, from what we can infer with, show, with what the show gives us, Rika would likely be an outcast at this point in life. Digimon is generally seen as four boys in the series. Comments from Takata's classmates is the only proof I needed for that assessment. But Rika's title as Digimon Queen also adds more weight to that. So, coupled with Rika going to an all-girls school, she likely wouldn't fit in with them at a younger age. As in the early 2000s, liking the stereotypical other gender thing was generally frowned upon. Obviously, that's changing things to many shows from the last decade. Anyway, inferring that Rika is seen as an outcast by classmates and her parents' divorce and mother's job making her home life rocky, Rika's idea of a relationship would be twisted to the point where she would keep everyone at arm's reach. Primarily because if you don't get close to anyone, you can't be hurt by anyone. All this brings us to Renamon. When it comes to how they interact, Rika can be cold to Renamon, acting more as business partners rather than friends. When given the opportunity to become a tamer, she just wants a strong Digimon she can evolve. So her early perception of Renamon and her situation is that of, we fight, then Renamon evolves. Over time, we watch as Rika opens up and starts to care more about her Digimon, as Renamon is the first one that is always around her, and because she is unable to fight Digimon on her own, Rika is forced to depend on Renamon. As they work together, they slowly grow closer as they rely on each other to fight. The data from each battle is a means to an end as it's the bond they forge from fighting together and Renamon always being close to Rika. That eventually leads to Rika caring enough about Renamon that she evolves to Cubimon when faced with the idea that Rika could lose Renamon forever. 
Now, after Renamon digivolves, Takata is faced with the idea that Giyomon could just disappear, as while walking with him one night, Giyomon starts fading away. He ends up finding Rika and asks her opinion about whether or not Digimon can return to the digital world, and as the two walk home afterwards, Takata watches as Giyomon fades away. Takata alongside Henry and Rika delve into the tunnels at under the city following Takata's compass that points to Digimon. They find him in a digital field tangled up by Data. They find him just in time to free him and get out before Hypnos deletes the field and everything inside it. Now, after almost losing Giyomon, Impmon starts harassing uh, people in the park at night, and in the original, Terrymon states that Giyomon could be the culprit since no one knows who it is. In the dub, he states that the culprit is too small to be an adult. That night, Impmon drags Giyomon out to harass more couples. Not understanding Giyomon wasn't the one harassing people, Takato blows up at Giyomon. Now, the dub has this problem that the entire episode, Takato is worried that, that people will find Giyomon, and it isn't alluded to Takato that Giyomon could be the culprit before Giyomon tells him that he was scaring people. What also adds to the problem is that Takato in the dub states that he just can't take it anymore, which is a poor word choice, as in the context of the episode, Giyomon just didn't listen to Takato once, so his word choice makes his anger come out of nowhere, where all they needed to add was a line about Giyomon never listening when Takato found out Giyomon didn't stay at the hideout. Now, Terrymon does learn the truth and relays it to Takato right before Davidramon almost kills him. Giyomon digivolves to Graumon and destroys Davidramon. The following episode has Takato and Henry try and get Graumon to return to Giyomon. After that, we get Rika struggling with what she wants out of her partnership with Renamon. While doing so, she starts getting stalked by an Ice Devimon. In the dub, it's so that she can be his partner to make him digivolve. And because I have still been unable to find a subversion I can watch, I'm not entirely sure on the original context. Rika ends up seeing how Ice Devimon defeats his enemies, leaving their lifeless bodies encased in ice. Scared that this is essentially what she and Renamon have been doing, Rika turns on Renamon and all Digimon, proclaiming that she hates them all. The following episode sees Henry and Terramon fighting over their dynamic and views on fighting, ending with Terramon having to digivolve so that he can defeat a Musayamon. The following episode wraps up the end of the first arc of Tamers. After the Ice Devimon incident, Renamon took off and she and Rika stayed out of contact, both wanting the other to need them, but being unwilling to say so. When three Digimon enter the real world, Renamon shows up to fight, hoping to meet Rika there. As she fights, uh, Henry meets with Rika outside, where she runs from the battle. Renamon then defeats the Digimon on her own, and after leaving the digital field, Henry tells uh, Renamon that Rika is worried about her. Renamon, Rika was here. I think she's worried about you. She is? Are you sure? Henry's conversation with Renamon is interesting. He uses the term partner when speaking about Renamon and Rika's relationship, and Renamon acts as if she doesn't know what the word means. However, the relationship between the two, while business-oriented, is only part of their story. They are partners, but they are unable to face any real challenges without each other. The word Henry should have used is friend instead of partner. Even though Rika doesn't really say that they are partners, both of them understand that they need each other for the digivolution process. Them being friends would be a more foreign concept for Renamon since she comes from the digital world, which in this incarnation is a battle-torn wasteland where only the strong can survive. Even if Renamon didn't ever work alongside other Digimon, she is likely to have seen Digimon work together, or at least be offered to join a group of Digimon at some point. My point is phrasing. The simple substitution of a word can make a world of difference. So Henry and Takato meet Yamaki for the first time, and he reveals that he's been watching the kids and knows about the Digimon. After, we get to learn that Jerry is a closet Digimon nerd wanting to meet Giyomon, and after getting a small part of Impmon's backstory, he and Renamon have a conversation. They discuss needing a human partner and how to Digivolve without one. On Rika's side, her grandmother talks to her and essentially says that she needs other people. Another Digimon appears that brings Rika and Renamon back together, and when Renamon is in danger, Rika reacts, stepping in to save Renamon. After Digivolving, Cubimon defeats Harpymon and refuses to load the data, claiming that she doesn't need it since she has Rika. I love this arc. I'm also biased, but I love this arc. Tamers has easily the most round out characters of Digidestin of any season. Mainly because Adventure had seven kids and their Digimon that they had to give character development to, all of which had to reach their champion forms in the first arc. This causes the first half of the arc to feel front-loaded, followed by them all being separated and having to come back together again, so the cast doesn't have any real time to breathe. Adventure 2, while having a smaller cast of main characters, is also juggling their old cast, so they have 11 Digidestin and their Digimon, not counting Ken and Warmon. They get some room by not having them Digivolve quickly since they Digivolve in their debut episode, barring Kari and TK. 
but they spend the entire time either having the old cast come in or having the new cast try and stop Ken with no other things to give the cast some downtime. We get some moments, but they are small and far in between. Tamers takes its time to set all their pieces because it, they downsize to three main characters. It allows more time for the story to establish their characters. I can tell you more about Takato and his interests than I can from Tai. Tai's main interest outside of saving everyone is soccer. Takato is an artist that loves a wider Digimon franchise. He plays the card game, he has a crush on Jerry, and spends most of his free time playing games with his friends. We also get to meet the other Tamers that will join the team later. Unlike Adventure, where we meet Kari 21 episodes in, Adventure 2 technically starts with us meeting Ken before the new main cast, but they don't interact until the second episode. Tamers actually lets us meet uh, and interact with almost all of our secondary cast before we meet the main cast, and none of the main characters know each other until after they meet in the series. Adventure had all the characters have ties with each other even if they didn't know it. O2 had most of the cast know each other at the start. Tamers is the first to where that changes. Yes, Takata knows the secondary cast barring Susie and Ryo, and Ai and Mako, if you want to include them, but they don't get a Digivice until the finale. But because of all that, we get to know more about the kids and how they act in everyday life. We learn about their struggles, and it allows the main cast to feel more human. Anyway, we enter into the second arc, the Deva arc. One of, if not the best written arc of the series. After Yamaki makes himself known, he activates Juggernaut, or Shigai. I'm not sure how to pronounce the original name. Juggernaut is a program designed to attract all Digimon in the human world. Juggernaut both works and fails as it draws in all the Digimon hiding in the human world, but it also draws in the first of the Deva that plagues the cast, Mahiramon. A tiger Digimon that easily dispatches the champion forms. The battle is great because it's the first time the cast is in real danger of losing their Digimon to a stronger opponent. Yes, Renamon had a few close calls, but this is the first Digimon capable of defeating the cast without much effort. After Graumon is defeated, he and Takato speak to each other via a psychic link. It's not explained in the dub. And the two choose to continue the fight, evolving to the next level War Graumon, and they defeat the first Deva. By the way, on a small side note, this is the first time that the kids had a more physical connection with the Digimon. Takato able to feel Giamon's pain alongside him. In O2, there was a mention that Ken and Davis were connected when the DNA Digivolved, but it didn't really go anywhere. Here we get to see how it affects the main cast. They're connected in more ways than one, allowing their feelings to push their Digimon further. Anyway, the Deva arc begins, and now all of Takato's class knows that Digimon exist. Takato's friends, Kanto, Kazu, and Jerry, will aspire to become tamers with their own Digimon during the next few episodes, with Jerry becoming partners with Leomon, though he does fight against it to start. Now, the Deva arc uh, brings back more of the moral dilemma that O2 tried to do with the Digimon Emperor arc. While talking to his sensei, Henry asks about the Devas, which I'm no expert, but the internet states that Devas in our world are the Hindu versions of gods, with their enemy being Ajuras. Now, this definition would make the human world in Digimon the Azura, and both sides are battling for some form of control over the other, for reasons on the human side being to protect themselves from the invading Digimon, and the Digimon we come to learn are trying to save themselves from their true enemy. Both sides are fighting for survival, and the moral quandary is, are the Devas evil because they are doing whatever is necessary to protect themselves? The Devas aren't black and white. Yes, from our perspective, they want to kill all the humans so they can take control of our world. But from their perspective, they are trying to run from something that nearly annihilated them once and is threatening to do so again. And when trying to find a safe place to hide, they end up in the human world where they are attacked by a select group that see them as lesser beings. So the Digimon, and eventually Devas, fight back. So are they truly evil? Some may start by saying yes they are. The Devas are attacking humans trying to kill them. Some may take a more sympathetic stance. Azulonmon believes they need to band together to fend off their true enemy for the good of the digital world, while Zuchalmon wants to wipe out the humans because they pose a threat to the digital world. And he's right. The human world created the Digimon in this canon and then chose to throw them away. When they started growing, the human world then started attacking them. It's impossible to know which side started the fights, but human nature tends to put self-preservation above all else. Anyway, midway through the arc, we start focusing on Impmon a little more to the point that we learn he wants to be able to digivolve, though he doesn't have the strength to, mainly because he hates humans due to his past with his partners. We learn this when the Deva Indramon appears, revealing that he was kept by Ai and Mako. As Rika appears, he vanishes. Impmon claims he's the strongest Digimon, and he doesn't need the help from anyone. When Indramon reappears, Impmon tries to fight him on his own, and proceeds to get nearly killed. 
He survives, and while on the brink of death, Katuramon appears, offering to make him Digivolve if he joins them. Imon agrees and returns to the digital world. During the arc, the kids start putting together that Kalamon has something to do with evolution, since he has been there every time they evolve, and after defeating a number of the Devas, Takato, alongside some of his friends, come across a mysterious kid that seems very interested in getting his hands on both Takato's Digivice and Kalamon. We learn during the final Deva attack of the city that this kid is Makuramon, one of the Devas sent to kidnap Kalamon for his power of evolution. The kids manage to defeat the Deva Vikilamon, who'd caused quite a bit of property damage. At the same time, Hypnos, who was using Juggernaut to destroy the Deva, ends up being destroyed in the process. After the fight, Makuramon reveals himself as a Deva and kidnaps Kalamon, returning to the digital world. And at the same time, Leomon gets injured and becomes Jerry's partner after refusing her when they first uh, met. So now the kids have to enter the digital world to stage a rescue mission. While searching for a way into the digital world, the kids decide to tell their families that they're leaving. Takayla introduces Gilmon to his parents, Rika's grandmother learns about Renamon, and Henry reveals that Terumon is alive to his sister. Jerry, who is now partnered with Leomon, has him explain that they're all going to the digital world. Gilmon manages to find a portal to the digital world under his home in the park. The kids resolve to leave after telling their families, and it's Kyle, Jerry, Kazu, and Kenta tell their teacher that they're leaving. Right before they enter the digital world, Yamaki shows up and gives the kids a communication device so they can contact the human world. Let's talk about the digital world because the story doesn't have as much happening as the amount of episodes might have you believe. The digital world in this iteration is vastly different from the previous two and every other version. The world is a wasteland, and while there are communities in the digital world, they are few and far in between. Those that do exist are either plagued by Digimon or were wiped out and are left as ghost towns. Traveling throughout the world, you are likely to come across wandering data packets of old data that uh, no longer have much of a form. These packets, while most likely being all that remains of old Digimon that succumbed to the dangers of the digital world, can be used as food or medicine for the odd Digimon. It's hard to find anywhere safe, as Digimon are constantly trying to get stronger to face the dangers of the digital world. There are those who won't fight and just seek safety, but even without battle, it can be quite easy to get separated from your friends, as any time someone on our side searches for anything, a beam of data that connects the two worlds comes down, and if you get caught in it, you could be sent anywhere across the digital world, left alone in a place that you don't know. The digital world this time around isn't somewhere you want to be. There's dangers at every corner, but there are a few good things too. When the kids first enter the digital world, Renamon tells them that the laws of the real world don't apply. The bright side to this is that the world reacts by what you believe. If you believe you can breathe underwater, then, well, there you go. One of the other upsides is that you only get hungry when you decide. So if you never think about food, then you're never going to get hungry. So the kids proceed to look for Kalamon when they reach the digital world. They meet a few friends on the way, the first being a Meramon who promptly dies a few hours later, setting up that in the digital world, you never drop your guard. Now I stated that the story doesn't progress as much as you would think. The kids constantly get sucked up by data streams and uh, get separated from each other. During this time, Kazu and Kenta will try to become partners with pretty much every friendly Digimon they come across. Kazu eventually partners with a Gardermon, and Kenta receives his Digimon partner at the end of the arc as they leave for the real world. When Rika, Kenta, Kazu, and Renamon get separated from the rest of the group, they come across another Digimon team. Some may know the Digidestin as Ryo from one of the games that was never localized. He also appeared as a minor role in Adventure 2 and Children's War game. He acts as a kid's guide through the digital world uh, while he travels with them. He and Cyberdramon are constantly looking for a strong opponent to fight, so he doesn't stay with the team for long. While we're on the subject, let's talk about Ryo real quick. He's supposed to be the experienced tamer that is an example of what the kid should strive to become, but he is the absolute worst example of a tamer we could get. He and Cyberdramon are never on the same page. Ryo has to whip his Digimon to get him to listen, and the only way we really see them interact with each other is by fighting. And when the story starts picking up while searching for Rika and Kalamon. After Rika leaves the party and uh, Kenta, Kaiser, and Ryo join up with the others, Rika gets swept up into a river where Kalamon shows up just in time to pull her out. Right after, Rika joins back up with the others before they're attacked by Beelzemon. Cubemon immediately recognizes him as Impmon. 
They're saved by the human world activating a juggernaut. This activates a data storm that allows the Davis to capture Calamon again, and uh, Takayo, Henry, and Terriamon get separated from the others as they are swept up into data streams. While two groups are separated, Rika's group meets an Andromon who returns to his champion form as Gardramon and partners with Kazu. They defeat an Arachimon, and that's about all. And on Takano and Henry's side, they make contact with the human world, assuring the kids' families that they're all safe. Not long after, they meet Shibumi, someone who worked on the Digimon project that Henry's father worked on. Only unlike the rest of the monster makers who stopped working on the project, Shibumi continued. Shibumi claims he created Takato and Henry before stating that everyone's sleeping, dreaming of what they may become one day, so that when they wake, they can start their own evolution. He then explains what uh, the Diginomes are and uh, what the blue card is. The blue card is an algorithm that allows Digimon to evolve beyond their original parameters, eventually allowing them to enter the human world. Shibumi tells them how to leave the, the digital world and lets them know about the Sovereign who governs over it. He then tells them that the Sovereign are afraid of something before sending them on their way. Now, after leaving Shibumi for the land of the Sovereign, Suzy ends up falling into the digital world where she comes across Antilamon, the last of the Devas, and while trying to get rid of Suzy, Antilamon starts liking Suzy and becomes her partner. At the same time, Henry and Takata run into the two. The following episode, we learn about the light of evolution, as Kalamon is dropped into the pit where the Sovereign plans on harnessing his power. On Takata's side, they run into Beelzemon. Takata calls upon uh, Gilmon during the fight between Beelzemon and Rapidmon, and the other group runs through a data stream, ending up with everyone together. As the entire group fights, Cubimon almost gets killed, saved by Leomon, leading to Beelzemon killing and absorbing Leomon's data. Out of anger, Graumon digivolves to War Graumon, and then Takato forces uh, War Graumon to digivolve again to Megidromon. Megidromon almost kills Beelzemon, though his more primal focus on fighting allows Beelzemon to get the upper hand when he absorbs more data, giving him just enough strength to defeat Megidromon. Now, I have two problems with this. Very small problems, but problems nonetheless. The first one is with Leomon dying, and the problem comes from him not having more time with Jerry. If they had a few more episodes where they could be partners more on their own, this wouldn't be an issue. We just didn't get enough time with them together, which can cheapen their relationship. The other is when Megidramon finishes his evolution. Takara goes from blind rage to remorseful immediately. He should only realize he screwed up after he's called out. After Megidramon is defeated, Takara runs over to him, and Takara comes to terms with his biggest character arc being what happens if uh, he loses Giyomon to evolution. He wishes they could start over, and uh, in the most surreal scene of the show, Takato manages to wake Giyomon. Upon finding Giyomon, they awaken from their, I'm going with Vision, in time to stop Beelzemon's attack. Determined to fight together, the two biomorphs to Gaumon, or Dukemon, depending on the dub, and together they fight Beelzemon, almost killing him if not for Jerry, who stops them at the last second. Beelzemon questions Jerry about why she would protect him. Jerry's reasoning is that she doesn't want anyone to get hurt because of her, and her line of thinking ends up shaking Beelzemon. He goes off on his own, disgusted by the person he's become, and he wants to give back all the data he's gathered. The following episode sees half the team going to meet with Zhu Chaomon. Henry, who's worried about his sister, tries to take the burden of getting them all home safely upon himself, which almost leads to Terrymon getting destroyed. Upon realizing he can't do everything alone and that he has friends there to back him up, Henry and Terrymon biomerge. They don't manage to defeat Zhu Chaomon, but they do manage to drop him in a hole and collapse his home on top of him. Zhu Chaomon quickly escapes the tomb and launches another attack. They continue fighting until the Zulonmon appears and stops Zhu Chaomon. Zulonmon and eventually Shibumi then explains the truth about the true enemy and Kalamon. Kalamon, who holds the power of evolution, was once just a power. One day, with the help of the Diginomes, he became a Digimon and was released into the human world, and the Digimon's true enemy is neither human nor Digimon, but another entity altogether. This entity known as Chaos, or the D-Reaper. The D-Reaper exists only to delete data that has grown beyond its original parameters. The D-Reaper is such a threat that a simple touch leads to death, and at current, it lies beneath the digital world. In the earliest days of the digital world, the Digimon and Gnomes lived alongside the D-Reaper, which nearly wiped out the Digimon. One day, it simply disappeared, and the Digimon started thriving until the D-Reaper reappeared. Since then, the Digimon started trying to gain power so that they could defeat the D-Reaper when it inevitably returned for a third time. After explaining everything, Azulamon helps the kid save Kalamon from his prison. On the way, we see Takayo try and cheer up Jerry, and we get the main part of our lead into the last arc. Jerry's mother died at some point in the past, and she promised to never let someone take her place. 
This led to her being distant from her stepmother when her father remarried. When getting to Calamon's prison, the kids are faced with the true nature of the D-Reaper as it's leaking into the digital world. The kids dived into the depths to find Calamon, and upon deciding that she wants to stay behind to hold back the chaos so everyone else can escape, Rika biomerges with Renamon to Sakuyamon. They save Calamon, and the D-Reaper spreads itself across the digital world and reaches the human world. At the same time, the D-Reaper preying upon uh, Jerry Zapain uh, swaps her with a clone. Back in the human world, Yamaki, alongside the help of Hypnos, the kids' families, and people all across the world, are trying to create an arc to bring back the kids. We also see Beelzemon letting Digimon drain him of his data, regretting his actions. Kalmon unleashes his power, allowing all the Digimon that are partnered with the children to digivolve to their highest forms. Kenta finally meets his partner, Marine Angemon, who only speaks in simple noises, and in the English version, sometimes he spouts off a word or two. Takao gets a message from a Yamaki, saying they're going to bring the kids home. They also have a time limit. Rika goes off before they leave uh, to find Impmon and don't make the time limit, as their ride leaves without her. Takato, who didn't get on, is also left in the digital world with them, only say because Giyomon asked for the Ark, eventually named Grani, to stop. With everyone on board, the kids return to the human world where they are met by their families, for the most part. You see, Jerry's father didn't show up, saying that she left on her own and can return on her own. This is where the digital world arc ends and the final arc officially begins. While not my favorite arc, uh, that would be a toss up to the Deva arc and the final arc of the season. The digital world arc is a good one if a little slow to start. They really try and build up to Kyle's main character arc being his fears of losing Gilmon, only to pull the rug out from under us and kill off Leomon, so Jerry can have her character arc and Takao can face his fears when Megidromon appears. This isn't the true end point of Takao's arc as that comes at the very end of the series, but if his arc did end here, it would have been fine as he does have a secondary arc that ties in with Jerry's arc. You don't really get it in the English dub, but in the original there is a constant storyline that Takao has a crush on Jerry, and uh, this tie will help push Takao to save Jerry during the last few episodes. Anyway, Takao offers to take Jerry home since she's alone. On the way, he confesses his feelings to Jerry, not knowing she's a D-Reaper clone. After dropping off Jerry, Takata learns that the D-Reaper has invaded the human world. We see all the kids, excluding Takata, with their families. We also see Impmon trying to find his partners, and the Jerry clone is torturing Jerry's half-brother. Takata calls his mother to tell her he's going to fight the D-Reaper. Rika's mother tells her she can go and fight while giving her a new shirt, also giving a permanent outfit change for Rika. Even if it goes from a broken heart to a complete one, it's nice symbolism. Henry talks to his sensei and mother, who gives him advice that will lead him to join the fight. All the kids meet up at the underground tunnel, and at the other end, they run into the D-Reaper scouts. Over the course of the next few days, the kids sleep at the school and eat at Takato's home while trying to fight the D-Reaper. We also learn, thanks to a well-placed camera, that the D-Reaper can't destroy things in the human world the same as the digital world. It also can't process biological matter, either. We also see Impmon trying to get directions to Ai and Mako's grandmother's uh, house, the only person willing to help him being Henry Sensei. After reading the message left for Impmon, he gives Impmon the reasoning as to why he isn't afraid of him. He then finds his partners by complete chance. Chibumi rejoins the Monster Makers and explains to them what the D-Reaper is, uh, while the kids uh, explain it to Yamaki. While the kids fight their first battle against the D-Reaper, Impmon is with Ai and Mako and learns about the fight. And without hesitation, he takes off ready to join. He evolves to Beelzemon and uh, turns to Beelzemon Blast Mode before he joins to help. Now, while the kids continue fighting the D-Reaper, Takato notices Jerry popping up even though she should be hours away. On the second day, the kids meet up with their parents back at Rika's house for breakfast, and when they head back out to fight, the kids meet up with a girl named Alice. She is a tamer as well, with her Digimon being sent on a mission to sacrifice himself so the kids can biomerge in the human world. Meanwhile, the Ark makes contact with Yamaki and they start work on Grani. While the three Megas fight, the other tamers barring Susie and who sends Lotmon start showing up to help after they defeat the biggest agent, and only after Galatmon gets pulled into the D-Reaper mass. Once inside, they lose their evolution, unable to hold their biomerge. Takato runs across the Jerry clone and learns that she's been captured by the D-Reaper. He also learns the D-Reaper's goal. So now we get to the D-Reaper's motives and what makes it such a great antagonist. We already know that the D-Reaper exists to delete anything that has grown beyond its original parameters, but we haven't seen the twisted logic it uses. For one, it assimilates Jerry so that it can learn about humans, and it could only do so because Jerry, after Leomon died, had her thoughts of creeping towards uh, those of destruction and pain, the only thing the D-Reaper can think about. It wants to destroy all humans and Digimon because of inherent defects. The D-Reaper believes it's some sort of perfect being. 
Humans are to be destroyed partly because they have emotions, which the D Reaper can't feel. The D Reaper exists only to destroy everything that has evolved. It doesn't bother with plants because when you think about it, plants act as simple machines. They turn carbon dioxide into oxygen through photosynthesis. They don't think, they don't move. Likely, the D Reaper sees them as objects that stayed inside their parameters, so there is no reason to delete them. However, the D Reaper is flawed because in order for it to complete its purpose, the D Reaper must evolve to continue deleting the ever evolving Digimon and eventually humans. It must evolve to fulfill its original purpose, and in order to, to evolve, it must absorb data and use it. This twists the D Reaper to the point where it starts acting more like a Digimon. Instead of existing only to remove evolution, it starts trying to remove anything it sees as weak. Anyway, with the help of Kanter and Marine Andromon, the kids rescued Takayo and Gilmon, and upon meeting up at Hypnos, they learn of the central consciousness of the D-Reaper, where Jerry is being held. They also learn where it is thanks to Kalamon and Beelzemon finding it between the government buildings Hypnos was located in. Beelzemon and Kalamon were also captured by the D-Reaper while trying to save Jerry. The kids learn about Grani, and Shibumi borrows Henry's Digivice so he can give Grani form, and Takayo tries to talk to Jerry's father, who doesn't respond to him. We see Jerry's father try and find Jerry. The kids, barring Henry, show up, and the D-Reaper shows one of its flaws. As it scans Jerry's memory, it runs into a contradiction between her feelings for her father. The D-Reaper, while trying to understand uh, what emotions are, is unable to process the complexity of someone who both loves and has resentment for someone else. The kids launch an attack against the D-Reaper, which brings out uh, the biggest agent it's had, and Grani emerges to help, tipping the battle in the kids' favor. After the fight, the kids return to their temporary home, where they see how the digital world is faring, and learn that the D-Reaper is spreading across the world. The D-Reaper evolves to protect itself, and the kids learn that Beelzemon is trapped inside. They launch an attack, with most of them splitting the D-Reaper's focus while Takayo goes to save Jerry. Beelzemon gets thrown out of the Colonel, where he meets uh, Gallimon, and they work together to free Jerry, only managing to break through when using Grani's Yugoth Blaster, and uh, when Beelzemon calls upon Leomon's data and uses his Fist of the Beast King. Takayo manages to get Jerry to rouse from her stupor, but she hesitates when Beelzemon uses Leomon's attack. Because of this, she stays trapped, and before they can break through again, Beelzemon nearly gets killed and dropped into the D-Reaper, saved by Grani. As the D-Reaper stops, so the others are from going after him. They retreat as the United Nations show up to attack the D-Reaper with a jamming device. The D-Reaper responds by using the negative emotions from Jerry to evolve to a stronger form. At the words, the kids retreat fully because they have no way to find inside the D-Reaper, so they're left to wait until the adults can find a way to deal with it. What they do is load a program into Terriamon that will destabilize the D-Reaper, and Shibumi gives Henry a red card that will allow the kids to fight inside of the D-Reaper. While that's going on, Kalamon stops Jerry from trying to kill herself. I'm not joking. So the four that can buy merge meet up so they can launch one last attack so they can save Jerry, as they are still unaware of the program that was loaded into Terriamon. As they fight, Gallimon gets uh, damaged, and Grani sacrifices himself to restore Gallimon, and allow him to digivolve to Crimson Gallimon. And as they continue the fight to save Jerry, Henry is told about the program and sets it off. Takayo finally reaches Jerry as his evolution form fails and as the D-Reaper is pushed back thanks to the help of the Sovereign. And after the world is saved, the kids are left standing in the park where they are forced to say goodbye to their Digimon, as the program that returned the D-Reaper to a more harmless state also made it nearly impossible for the Digimon to stay in the human world. All of the kids' character arcs come to a close here. Jerry, while never going to be over Leomon, has healed enough to move on, and will likely start to building a relationship with her stepmother, and will repair her relationship with her father. Rika, who has uh, come to terms with her feelings surrounding her family, learning that while her mother may not look like it, she is trying. Henry finally learned uh, that he has to fight some battles, but those battles that he fights must have meaning behind them. Takayo finishes both of his arcs, now that he has Jerry back, and he is forced to lose Gilmon, though now without Gilmon, he is forced to move on. Normally he's okay, though he does want to keep his promise to Gilmon that they'll see each other again. Now, I stated a few videos ago that I would talk about why I love the series as much as I do. Beyond everything, I've stated uh, for how great the story is, there are two things I want to state clearly. The first is that I can relate to the characters a lot. This show helped to form the person I am today, like all media we watch as kids form us. This one just had the biggest impact. The other reason is that my siblings also enjoyed Tamers, so it was a good uh, way for us to bridge the generations. 
as there is a time gap between me and my older siblings. I won't say how big the gap is, but I will say the Tamers and even World 3 was a way that I bonded with my brother and sister. So, despite the minor problems this season has, I really can't bring up any negative emotions directed towards Tamers. I know a lot of Digimon fans only watched Adventure. It's why they focused so much on it the last few years with trying Last Evolution Kizuna before the reboot. I just wanted to point out each season has its strengths. Even the ones that have many more problems have things to pay attention to. Even the seasons I don't like have their moments. They're worth watching, and if you haven't seen Tamers or Frontier or Data Squad, even Fusion, I would recommend at least uh, giving them a look. Hey guys, um, thanks for watching this video. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I was originally wanting it out to, around Christmas, and well, you can see how well that worked out. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be returning to some shorter form content uh, here for the next uh, while because these Digimon videos really took a lot of time that I did not think they were going to take. Uh, thanks for watching those who have uh, been around since I started. I We have we jumped in subscribers. I think from the beginning we got about 115 at this point from when I started these Digimon videos. So for all of you that subscribed since then, thank you. For everyone that was subscribed before then, thank you. It really means a lot to me. And uh, if there's ever something you want me to review, throw a comment uh, down below. And I try and interact with as many people as I can. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.